anyway, so I'm, I'm here to film you. Um, it's Layla Fiagi because you know I have I also have two sons. One of them is 22 and one is 27, and I, I say I can't imagine anything worse than having them in jail. And so I'd like you to tell us about your son and your family. Uh, does he have brothers and sisters? And yeah, we just have I have a, an older son mm -hmm. and him. Yeah, that's it. We're just two, you know, oh. two sons and me. Yeah. We live in the family. And um, my older son lives in Buffalo right now. And mm -hmm. my younger son, Ziad, is the one who's in jail. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you see, like, he went to Egypt and to Jordan. This is his picture with his friend. And they just went to Egypt and Jordan for a visit. And after two years of coming back, the FBI decided to indict them and charge them with material support and uh, conspiracy to maim and people abroad. And um, as you see, they're having fun, you know. Uh -huh. Which I have, one is it? So yeah, this, this one to the this left. One to the left. Uh -huh. And this one is Omar. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they're just silly kids, 19 mm -hmm. years old. Were they both arrested? Yes. They're both now in Harnett County Jail, Lillington, North Carolina. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what were they were charged with? Conspiracy and material support. And um, I don't even know how to uh, amount to that because, like my son, he's like so sweet and it's just amazing. Like if a fish dies, he would cry over a fish. And mm -hmm. like I had ants that before, just a few days before he was arrested, that kept on my kitchen sink and I started killing them, you know, spraying ant spray on him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Mom, why do you have to kill them? Why don't you just let them be? And I just looked at him and it's like, what? <laughs> How can, you know? <laughs> How can I just let them be? And I was like, what a soft-hearted mm -hmm. boy he is. The FBI targeted him and he's like, Mom, I just fit the profile. I'm Muslim, mm -hmm. I'm Arab, and I'm, a y I'm, and I'm young. So mm -hmm. that fits the profile and mm -hmm. that's why they're targeting me. And how old is he? 23 right now, 23. and he's been two years in jail. They put him since he was 21. Wow. Mm -hmm. He's okay. waiting trial. He's waiting trial, and the mm -hmm. first hearing was coming up? No, he had many hearings, many hearings. but this is a bigger hearing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in New Bern, North Carolina, mm -hmm. on July 29th. And then there's an arraignment in Raleigh, um, in the federal courthouse, on uh, August 15th. And so he's been in jail for two years. What sort of conditions has he been held under? Well, most of the time they put him in uh, lockdown. Sometimes I feel like if he sneezes, they just put him in lockdown. And his lockdowns mm -hmm. are long, like they're 30 days. Mm -hmm. And it's like they, they have these small, tiny cells that they hold him in 23 hours a day. And then they're allowed to shower. And if he's in lockdown, he's not allowed to use a phone for maybe half of the time he's in lockdown. Mm -hmm. And then the phone privileges come back. And use the phone at all? Not the first probably couple of weeks. Couple of weeks. And how often can he call otherwise? He can call about every day if he wants to, but it's very, so, very expensive. Mm -hmm. It's collect calls. Yeah. So they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. See, when did you last see him? I saw him probably about two weeks ago. I have to drive an hour, and it's only a 15-minute visit, and it's through a monitor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I really don't see him. I can't touch him. I can't, like, mm -hmm. so, so, and then all of a sudden just the screen goes blank, and, you know, or whatever conversation would have happened gets cut off. And the way it happened, it was just so bizarre. I mean, I wouldn't, um, just to have this older lady with her errands, she called me, she's like, can you help me with my errands, because she doesn't drive, and I was like, yeah, sure. And I came back, and I found his cell phone over here, and I got worried, just like, hmm, hmm, why is his cell phone here, and he's not? He's like, there's nothing I can do about wait, I can't call him. And then the same old lady calls me, and she's like, did you hear the news? And I was like, what news? She's like, your son is in jail. I was like, what? And I thought that she was just saying that because she's, uh, you know, an older lady. And then she's like, ask the, the young man who's with him in the picture, his name is Omar, and she's like, ask Omar's dad. So I called Omar's dad, and he was crying, and it's like, unfortunately, yes. So I just started screaming. I, cu I couldn't help it. Mm -hmm. I was running upside and up, upstairs and downstairs and screaming, and I started ripping my clothes, and I just felt like I'm about to lose my mind. I mean, mm -hmm. it just didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And when they told me terrorism charges, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a big deal. This is serious. Mm -hmm. 
And then later on, okay, I'm like depressed, but the lady comes to ask about me, the lady at the apartment complex, she's a, the secretary over there, and they've known us for 10 years, 13 years we've been in the same apartment complex. And um, she's like, are you okay? And she's like, you, you should have seen how they arrested him. There was a SWAT team. Mm -hmm. He was in the pool and the guns, people with guns hiding behind um, trees and stuff like that came out on him. And it's like, and, and, and he was just calm. He was shocked. He wasn't shocked. And then he calls me to tell me that he's in jail and whatever, and the detectives, FBI's were here questioning me. And it's like, we feel that your son knows something that he's hiding about this guy, the ringleader, the one they call the ringleader. And that if we push him so much that he's going to say something. And I was like, my son doesn't know anything. And then they started questioning me. I said, I don't know anything about this guy either. Okay? And, you know, we're innocent. And then it's like, I, I told him, do you want me to lie or something? You know, come up with something? Just so he can be satisfied? Hmm. So the guy called, my son calls me while the, the FBI is here. And he's worried about me when he knew that they're here. And he's like, Mom, uh, are you okay? And I was like, honey, just call me back. Just call me back. Because I, I couldn't concentrate on both of them. Mm -hmm. And then he calls the office lady and he's like, please, please go check on my mom. They might arrest her. And she comes in, in tears and she's like, your son is like really worried about you and thinks that they might arrest you. And she, I told him, why would they arrest you? And he said, well, they arrested me for no reason. Mm -hmm. So why would they arrest my mom? And he's like so worried about me. So he puts me always ahead of himself. Yeah. He's always been like that, so caring. Mm -hmm. You know, my older son is the one who used to get in trouble. And he's like, Ziad is the quiet son. <laughs> that should not be happening to him. So he's an artist, like he likes to draw oh. and stuff like that. My yeah. son was about to go to college. And he was looking into different colleges. And mm. the colleges, after he went to jail, kept on calling me. And we were normal American families. Uh -huh. You know, we never did anything wrong. I mean, yeah. just love people, love our country. And, mm. and the bad thing about this is that, you know, this is our country. This is where we live. This is where I was born. Yeah. And this is what we know as our country. Mm -hmm. And for our own country to do this to us, this yeah. is the sad part. It's yeah. like, it's like you have a best friend that came and stabbed you in your back. And honestly, I cry every day. Yeah. I wake up 7 o'clock in the morning, sometimes crying loud in, in bed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to put the blanket on my mouth so my neighbors wouldn't hear me cry. Mm -hmm. Like when he, I heard the news, he's like, um, there's a hearing on the 29th of July, and then there's an arraignment on the 15th, and that got me worried, uh, 15th of August, and that got me all worried. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they pressure them to plead guilty. Yeah. They scare them, oh, you're facing life in jail, or you plead guilty and we'll give you 10 years. Yeah. So what are they going to do? What do they do? Yeah. And uh, your options yeah. of you getting out of this are 2% mm -hmm. or 5%. So, of course. My, my son was so silly before he went to jail. And then all of a sudden, you know, silly young man. And it's yeah. like, when is he going to mature, for heaven's sake? After one month, like, it's like, wow. He was sounding like a man, somebody, you know, who has to defend himself. Just like right out of high school, mate, him and his friend took the trip? Yeah, uh, they were just 19. It's like vacation, right? Yeah, so because... see the world a little bit. Yeah, yeah because one thing, you know, um, my dad is Arab, my mm -hmm. mom is an American, my dad is Arab. His dad is also Arab. Mm -hmm. So, um, people, in, we weren't that much into the Muslim community before, and then all of a sudden we started, you know, and, and we moved here and... Um, in West Raleigh and there's a lot of Muslim people and then we start integrating with them and they're very, very nice people, friendly people, helpful people. And um, my son, you know, liked them, people, you know, who kind of look like him and stuff and he, he started going with them to basketball games, uh, football games and stuff. And um, their community is very, very scared right now. Everybody just, most people backed off. Do they go to the hearings? Um, Who goes to the hearings? Uh, mostly me by myself. Uh, yeah, a lot of them don't <laughs> yeah. want to be seen there. Yeah. yeah, because they're Muslims and they're scared. Yeah.